tudo bem? Seja muito bem-vindos ao Cultura de Excelência. Eu sou a Karen Ross e um prazer receber vocês aqui. Aqui na Voito teremos encontros semanais onde vamos conversar com mulheres de todo o mundo sobre propósito, melhoria de processos e gentileza. Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Karen Ross and it's a pleasure to welcome you here. Here at Voito, we're having weekly meetings talking about with women around the world about purpose, process improvement, and kindness. And before we get started on today's fabulous topic, which is you're gonna see is near and dear to my heart. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask if you haven't already to use the QR code that you see on the screen and download our manual that's going to tell you everything about the web series. You'll be able to find insights from all of the different episodes. You'll have lots of fabulous information. So just take a moment before we get started. Use the QR code, download the manual. Excellent. All right. So today we're going to be talking about something that you all know is super important to me, and that is service excellence. How can we keep the focus on the customer using Lean? And I have invited a very, very special guest to talk to us uh, today about this, and her name is Ana Isabel Roca, and she's from Portugal. And during the pandemic, she worked with a company doing a fabulous project that's really focused on service excellence. And I think it's unbelievably timely. And she's going to tell us all about it and answer our questions. I'm super, super excited that she could join us today. So Anna, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for the invitation, Karen. Muito obrigada a este projeto também, por fazer parte hoje e poder gravar convosco e poder partilhar um bocadinho aquilo que foi a minha experiência. Eu venho, a primeira formação que fiz formal foi gestão de turismo e trabalhei apenas um ano na área, mas sempre, sempre muito focada na, na, na gestão de clientes. Tive um ano em Londres a trabalhar nessa área e, portanto, de facto, o feedback dos clientes era, era o mais importante. Mais tarde mudei da área e passei para a indústria farmacêutica, trabalhei sempre associada à saúde, com grande foco uh, em servir bem o paciente. Mais tarde trabalhei uh, num projeto de uh, dispositivos médicos, onde trabalhava com, em blocos operatórios, e aí a questão, a formalização da necessidade de um processo limpo, em que todas as etapas fossem cumpridas para que o dispositivo fosse bem utilizado, um, foi, foi fundamental e eu aí comecei já a pensar uh, na, na importância de verificar um processo de, de olhar para todas as etapas uh, como estava uh, ligada à área da saúde já há muitos anos e, uh, e trabalhar em blocos operatórios fui desafiada por, uh, por, por uma pessoa amiga na altura que estava a começar a trabalhar com uh, Lean na Saúde Uh, estava a começar um projeto na Linel de Portugal e eu fui desafiada a dar aqui uma ajuda também no arranque desta, deste projeto e comecei a fazer melhoria contínua em blocos operatórios, uh, em, no, 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 no fluxo do paciente bloco operatório e o meu caminho de Lean começou aí, comecei por estudar os, os modelos do Virginia Mason Institute, uh, depois estudei formalmente coaching e uma série de ferramentas também com o Instituto of Healthcare Improvement uma série de ferramentas de Lean, e o Lean depois passa a fazer parte da nossa vida e, e queremos utilizá-lo em, em todo lado. Ana, thank you so much, muito obrigada, and it's so wonderful to have you on the show. It's wonderful to have you as a member of Women in Lean, our table. And the reason that I wanted to invite you today to talk about service excellence, before we start our formal questions. <laughs> I wonder if you could tell us just a little bit about the project that you you worked on with the delivery company, because as we all know, during COVID, so many things happened so quickly and so many organizations found themselves 
and with all kinds of customer changing needs. So could you just tell us briefly about that project and then people will know a little bit about it and you'll be able to, uh, you know, we'll talk about the other questions in relationship to that. Okay. Um, well, this, because I, I, I knew some lean tools, when you start uh, coaching for improvement, you just talk about it the whole time with everybody. <laughs> and I already talked with, with these people because I knew these people from this small company. Of the, they deliver uh, f, um, boxes, f, uh, fresh f, uh, fruit and vegetables boxes, and they have a small project. And I noticed that they were always very anxious because they they they, they were both from different backgrounds, and they start on that on their um, project. They love it, but they were always uh, with a lot of things to do, very tired, very stressful. And I'll I, I'll talk to them and I told them we need to talk about process improvements we need to talk about it i will help you we need to talk about this but it never happened and then when the pandemic uh started started they 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 panic and they call me because from about 70 uh, uh delivering boxes per week they they have uh, their orders increased for 400 uh, baskets per week so it was like getting crazy uh, a very small company but the thing, the, mo the thing that I love it most, it was like w uh, they are um, the, the owners of the company. It's um, a man and a woman. And the woman was telling me, I need to go, I need to help these people. Because many of these people, they are alone at home with babies. They are old people. People were having, were, were, were scaring with COVID. Uh, it, there, there were big queues in supermarkets. And that kind of, of delivering was like a really need. And they were like, we were having troubles until now with only 70 uh, boxes per week. How are we going to manage to, to, to serve our clients? And their purpose is really to serve clients. And one of my purposes in life is one of the, another thing that I love is uh, food and how food interacts with us and I try to influence people to have more vegetables and more plant-based food because I, I really like that that part of the life as well so I was very happy to to help them with with this project because during pandemic it would be very easy to start eating pizza whole day as well <laughs> if you don't have access to proper things and yes started I totally agree with you and I love it because the whole basis of lean though we all sometimes think about it as you know a way to speed up processes or ways to make things easier when you really look at Toyota way and the basis of lean is how can we best serve our customers changing needs and in this case during the pandemic like all of us your the company that you helped found all of a sudden their customer needs change I've never ordered groceries from the supermarket before. I always, because I eat a plant-based diet, I always went to choose everything myself and suddenly it wasn't safe to go. And I had to do the same thing. And the supermarket here figured out a way to do it. So I was wondering, you know, thinking about your customers based on their purpose and your purpose, what would you say service excellence is? How would you define service excellence for us? Oh, uh, I think you need to be really in a in a in a genuine way. You need to be really uh, thinking in in the client's needs. And if we are with all our hearts, if we are focused on on the client's needs, I'm, I'm sure we will we will do the whole way we need to do. To, to do a, an excellent service. I'm totally, totally in agreement with you. So how did your, how did you help your customers in the delivery business? How did you help them figure out what their customers really needed during COVID? Yes, it was, well, um, there was a lot of, that project took me about like, 11 hours per day of work because it was very very challenging 
and we didn't have much time and we, we need to, to do a lot of change. But I thought that Lynn could really help us. And the first thing we, we, we did was mapping the process. They were kind of very stressed with everything, and but the the they didn't even have uh, like they didn't knew exactly uh, the steps they need to 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 go. We were having like uh, finding a lot of of duplication of tasks. Uh, there was a lack of communication. Even they they were very they they are um, it's a family company. But the lack of communication was was really was really big, um, and 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 the first thing was like help them to dealing to deal with the frustration, uh, because they talk everything in a very personal way, so not in a process way, and that was the biggest. I think that was the big start, because to to change the mindset and make them think. And make them see that this is the process fault like you know like this is the process fault it's not your fault this is not about you and this change was the like this was the way we could start and build something new because in the beginning it was like they they felt so guilty because they weren't uh, as organized as they would like to be and it was like a big mess so when they start mapping when they accept mapping start mapping the process they were like ah oh, i didn't knew i was doing this oh why are we doing this twice or and we start step by step but the confidence from the beginning i think it was very very important to make them look to the process for the first time instead of uh, thinking in in, in, the, in the mistakes and dealing with the mistakes that were happening a lot of mistakes of course with all those deliveries but looking at the mistakes and trying to 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 get advantage of them trying to keep things trying to write it down everything and knowing that we would be improving week by week we couldn't improve everything i mean continuous improving is something for life but and and make them understanding that we could solve some things now and we'll have to solve another in the, in the next weeks so and and i was training them to with some tools as well in in Excel and organizational tools, and well, it was finding waste, assuming waste. Lynn gave us a really really good help. I think that that's so important to focus on because oftentimes, you know, people look internally at the company and blame themselves and. They just think, oh, things are terrible. But nobody goes, nobody sets out to create a process that doesn't satisfy the customers, right? So I love it that you were able to focus them on looking at what is and then really understanding, especially in this time of change, what customers needed now. Because what we need now is not exactly the same. And then helping them to develop the new way. So once they saw from the process mapping, once they saw some of the problems with communication, duplication, what other lean tools or practices did you help them learn so that they could have better delivery? Yes, they, they, they learned to find ways and write it down and try to understand do I, do I really need to do, to ask this question the whole time is that, do I really need to do this task? And do I really need to do it on this way? Or is there another way that I can, that I can uh, have to, to, to solve this problem? So I think that was very important. So because when you, when you do a task in an automatic way, you always think there is not, no other way to, <laughs> To do it, and when you start thinking, uh, that's that's very good. They 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 externalize some tasks as well. It was very very important to externalize some of the tasks, um, and they develop tools to listen clients in very regular basis and to work on those complaints and all that feedback, and go to the customers and ask them feedback in an active way, not in a responsive way, but in an active way. 
and that was uh, so then in the end we just designed a new flow uh, without the waste that we were finding but the I think the, the, the most uh, important thing is like they, they first of all they need to listen the internal clients because the lack of communication was about that and then listening the external clients is part of the process and it's something that has to happen like every day at least every week and that will give you uh, tools to 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 be able to go to your to your to your uh, clients and to your clients needs all right so that's so interesting a lot of times we think uh, voice of the customer or getting feedback from our customer we do something and then we send them like a computer survey <laughs> and they're going to send us back the answer and then maybe somebody looks at the computer surveys maybe somebody never looks at the computer surveys how did they how did they really interact with their customers on a day-by-day -day basis to find out what they're changing customers need? We, we create, we didn't have, we create um, uh, WhatsApp, uh, a WhatsApp communication for clients. And that helped a lot because they were calling a lot as well. So, and having the WhatsApp was, was okay. Then we have, um, um, that was really important. And we were having the, the, we create the habit in that time to pick up, like, uh, we, we, we were doing surveys as well, and mm -hmm. we used the, that data, and in, in we were calling uh, in a, like, we were, like, in a um, uh, aleatory uh, way, we were calling, like, uh, 10 clients every week to know how, how did it went. And that was that was very good because people were were people were like really happy because we were were with, with what they think and how did they receive the the stuff and it's well and and to deliver really fresh things looking good in in that can be quite challenging and knowing what what didn't went so well can help us to create new measures even to accommodate vegetables in in a different way or to wet them during the transport and it's like it looks basic but it's really really important and and the clients were getting really happy because they knew what they were saying their feedback wasn't something just to it was their feedback was really a tool for us and we were changing with the feedback of the of the of the clients and that was really nice that is super 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 inspiring and I think it's really uh, so important uh, when you think about service excellence. Our customers are human beings and they have good ideas to help us figure out the solutions to our problems too. And when we treat them as human beings and we really ask them what they think and what they feel, like you said, they're happy, they're excited. <laughs> when we have that connection did people did you call did the company call them on the phone so that someone actually spoke to them yes 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 that was very important because in the beginning the company they were two people delivering the the boxes and with these orders that 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 wasn't possible so we need to to externalize and get um people to do it but we we wanted to keep very very uh, attached to the clients and to let them know we were still uh, expecting them to receive everything great and we were still very very worried and very not worried but attentive and it was our yeah. our purpose. I, I think that's so important and it's so often forgotten that that actual speaking to your customer right on the telephone or in person and then actually listening and that personal yes. human connection yes. right yes is so important for yes. service not only is not a site can be a site only and yes the recording and now press one now press two now press four i think people <laughs> just don't want to hear press one or two or four or five anymore yes 
No, I think that's around the world. It doesn't matter whether we're in Portugal or Brazil or yes, United States. Yes, like crazy because it's just really neat to, to speak with somebody that can hear you and, and, and think it's, that can be very challenging. Yes, when we, we get on the phone and we hear the recording say, oh, your call is very important to us, pick number. I think as customers, just we all... Wanna, yeah, you just want to run. <laughs> yes, our call is not very <laughs> important. Yes. Right, yes. That's totally, totally um, wonderful. So can you tell us, after the end, well, not necessarily the end, but after you were working with the company sometime, focusing on learning more from your customers and focusing on service excellence, what actual improvements in service delivery were made? So uh, how did things improve for the company and for the customers? For the company, we are talking about uh, growing like to 300%. So that was, of course, that was very huge. And, and then we need to know how to keep how to, we need to know how much could we deliver without losing quality. And that was quite challenging on that time as well, because we were having 400 baskets, uh, orders of 400, and we did the process and we knew it, we could go to three, until 300. So we would have to leave 100 customers uh, out of the process at that time. And that was very nice because we were, we are, we were, we have to define some criteria, and we need to, we want to keep serving the, the customers that were with us since the beginning. Uh, because of their loyalty, of course, we want to get the opportunity to get new customers, of course, and we were using as well uh, as the time. So uh, the the order of uh, so who comes comes first is is served first, but we open a space for like special needs. So people with babies, people with old people, they have they they could tell us that when they were ordering, and that was the criteria for us. And we, and it was transparency. We told, and every time we couldn't serve a few people, we were giving them feedback. We're really sorry because of this. We promise you that next week you will be served. And we were taking care of all of those particularly. And that was that was hard to do, but we didn't want to let anyone like abandon or we, but we didn't care. That was well, that was quite challenging, but it was very, very a very good thing. And and nowadays the the culture of of continuous improvement. Is, is still happening in this company. And it's very nice because, I mean, they were a family company and now they have formal meetings. Every week they have a formal meeting to see what when they are dealing with the mistakes in a regular basis and they are using the mistake uh, as a tool, as a tool to improve and to learn. And before that, the mistakes were like, it's, my, it's only, the, the, the only purpose of the mistake was Whose fault is this? <laughs> so it's like, and then you don't deal with the mistake because you're just seeing whose fault is this mistake. And when you start seeing that mistakes can be the best tool for improvement, and I think that was the, one of the biggest challenge, one of the biggest change in their mindset was like mistakes are good tools. We need to write them all, and we need to talk about them all the whole time to see what can we do with it. If we do, how can we improve? And that is very different. I love that. So in a time that was so difficult, using lean, lean tools and lean thinking, the company was able to grow. It was able to satisfy customers and it was able to care for customers, even telling our customer, I'm sorry, I couldn't help you that creates that personal human connection, right? Yes. And apologizing when things don't go wrong, don't go right. And it's so important to learn that we can fix problems. We don't need to blame ourselves. Problems are always gonna happen, right? They're always gonna happen. Nothing is perfect. 
I love that. It's such an amazing story thank and you. an amazing experience. And thank you so, so, so much for helping that company. I have a couple of other questions because Voito has many fabulous students and the students often ask us questions. So as we're thinking about other small businesses or, uh, you know, companies that might not think to use me, how do you, what do you think would be the best tools for them to start using or way to start using lean to deliver service excellence? If there's other small businesses listening, how should they get started? I think, well, start is always the first step and the hardest step as well. <laughs> I think it's, it's very good to have an external look because sometimes in, a, in internal uh, basis, we are so, you know, we are so like this in our problems that it's, it's not easy to, to change the mindset. So sometimes I think an external uh, look can be a very, very, very good help. And we need to start mapping the process and trying to observe and look what's happening at, at the moment. I think that's the, the, the main step. Because we always think, no, I already know what I'm doing. I don't need to map. What, what is that? I'm just losing time. What is that thing? What are you doing with those papers? <laughs> and you like with those post-its that we use so much on Lean. But mapping the process and be, before we build the, 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 the process that is almost perfect for us or, or the best process, we need to know what's happening at the moment and look at it as a process not as a personal thing. Uh, I know the process, they have a lot of personal uh, uh, characteristics of, from the people who, who, who build it, and we, we respect that a lot, but we need to keep uh, or, or try to, to, to increase uh, a distance, a security distance uh, bef uh, to, to have a look at the process. And, and 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 see it in a, in a distance that you can look and other people can look and, and can find ways and find whatever you can do it to, to start improving your process. I think those are fabulous words of advice and very doable. What would you suggest for a company that maybe isn't very focused on its customers? It, now, how, how how could we help them become more focused on their customers in these times of changing customer needs? Well, I think they need to get away, an active way to listening customers. If you don't listen to them, you, you won't know what's happening. We don't know the feedback. We don't know how satisfied someone is with the service or with the product and, unless you ask them. And the silence can be very dangerous. <laughs> so a customer that complains is always a good start. I think even if you don't start for another way, a customer that com a complain is always a, a beautiful start because the person who's complaining, he's looking for, he, he wants to be heard. So that could be a, a good start. I agree with you 100%. A customer who complains is giving us a gift, right? Yes. They spent their time to tell us what's wrong. Now we should repay the gift by taking that information and doing something with it to make things better and also to thank that customer. So many times companies will say to me, oh, but I don't have bad customer surveys. I only have good customer surveys. So it means everything is good. But you said something extremely correct. Silence is a problem, right? Because many customers who are unhappy just leave and go to another company. They don't, they don't say anything at all. That side, we should never assume our customers are happy. Service excellence means we need to go and ask them about it. And internal clients, they need to be heard as well. Internal clients, they, they are, they, they have a huge importance 
and I think it's very good to create the, the, the habit of, of listening them and, and, and create a culture of finding a mistake. You could even have a, a reward because you find a mistake instead of, of, uh, instead of guilt. And we have yes. a lot of guilt in, in a lot of cultures. So yes, it's mistake there. is something to be rewarded and not and not not to be blamed blamed with it. Yes. Instead of a punishment, we can have a reward for yes. as we often yes. say a problem yes. is buried treasure, right? Yes. Well, Anna, it's shocking, but our time has gone by. Thank you so first of all, thank you so much for your kindness and your leadership in helping the delivery company so that they could help all of those people who need to have food and food security and good food to eat during the pandemic. So mucho obrigada for that. And of course, mucho obrigada for coming and sharing with us today. I know that there's gonna be so many people who watch the web series who have questions for you and want to get in touch with you how can they find you yes you can find me on linkedin um and it's you have my email there and i'll be happy to, to help people whoever needs to contact me i'll be happy to answer totally totally wonderful is there any last words of wisdom you'd like to tell our viewers before we end the show today Oh, I haven't thought about it. I just think that the purpose, doing whatever you do to improve anything, do it with your heart as well, because everyone has a heart. <laughs> and if, if, if you have uh, your intention to improve is the main, is the main uh, thing to, to go, then that will give you energy to keep going and, and keep improving. I totally 100 agree, percent agree. Service excellence is about our heart and, and always starts with purpose, right? Yes, yes. yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and telling us about this wonderful project and sharing your words of wisdom. Thank you very much for the opportunity of being here. I'm very pleased to be here. It was very good as well. Thank you very much. Muito obrigada. <laughs> Thank you. All right, before we end the show, uh, that was a wonderful discussion. And of course, we have a lot of insights. So the first insight is to serve with excellence, you need to focus on the customer. No matter how challenging it is for us, we must always think first about what the customer's needs are and actually ask our customers what their needs are. Insight number two. When you start mapping the process, you realize that um, the way you've been doing things, the flows <laughs> that you have um, may not be the best ones, but you've done it that way for a long time, so you don't even notice. So first step, map your process and find out what's really happening. Insight number three, ask questions. Once you've mapped it out and you can see, do I really need to do this task? Why am I doing it this way? Is there a better way to do it that will allow us to serve our customers better? Is a great place to start. Insight number four, always remember, our customers are human beings just like you and our and we are, and you and me. And they have great ideas to help us improve the process. They're happy to, often to share their ideas with us. So make sure that we're asking them for feedback and giving the things that they suggest to us a try. You can do it on the telephone, you can ask in person, and of course, we can easily do it through WhatsApp. All right, for insight number five, to improve the defects, we must know about them. We have to make be kind and make things safe and comfortable for the people who do the work for us to tell us when things aren't working well and also for our customers. Insight number six, remember, nobody is perfect. People make mistakes, problems can be solved. And as long as we treat people with kindness, they're gonna be willing to bring us those problems, which is our buried treasures. Insight number seven, 
Silence is a problem. Just because you haven't heard from your customers, please don't think everything is okay. Don't wait. Contact them right away because service excellence starts with purpose and starts with deeply understanding each of our customers' needs. Well, everyone, hard to believe it, but that's it for this week's episode of Cultura G Excellencia. Thank you for joining me and Anna Isabel Roca today. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone next week when we'll be talking about how to implement lean in creative work with another great woman in lean. Until then, I hope you have a fabulous week filled with purpose, process improvement, and kindness. Ben Peso, essay fois au décimo episodio do Cultura de Excelencia. Muito obrigada, Sir John Trum, a mim, e a Ana Isabel Roca Uge. Espero ver todas vocês na semana que vem, onde vamos falar sobre como implementar lean no trabalho criativo. Com mais uma mulher incrível no lean. Até lá, espero que você tenha uma semana fabulosa e cheia de propósito, melhoria de processo e gentileza. Tchau, tchau, everybody!